Do you feel like you're always saying no to your kids? I mean, think about it for a minute. Does it feel like you're telling them to stop doing something, to knock it off, no, they can't have this, no, they can't have that, or just pretty much kind of cutting them off, <laughs> their desires and what they really want to be doing in the world? And it doesn't, have you ever noticed it doesn't really feel good? Like you just feel like the bad guy all the time? Well, I want to talk to you about that and share with you a technique that I use that helps me say yes to my son more often, and it provides a lot more stability and happiness and joy in our little family. This is Zen in a Moment. It's the podcast where you can learn to train your brain to stop stressing forever and be the cool, awesome person you know you can be. I provide tips and strategies that move you from stressed out to in the flow, flow meaning feeling light, open, and wise. And I'm your host, Zen Cryer to Brooke, stress as guidance expert. So I adore my son. He's three, almost four years old now. He has got the most joyous, beautiful little heart. If you haven't found me on Facebook, uh, I recommend that you do. Go ahead and look me up and, and check out my little family and where we live. Um, and I've noticed that there are times when I go through this period, if I'm not careful, where it's a constant no. Stop jumping on the couch. Pick that up. Don't put that glass there. Move this over here. Don't take your clothes off. <laughs> All kinds of different things that are coming up for him at three. And they're not really coming from me being present and conscious with him. In fact, they're a gut reaction to me being in, in, in my head, being in the hurried moment of life, and not really taking each situation as it arises and gauging it as to what's appropriate for him in that moment. And so I started using my internal guidance system more on learning how to relax and decipher what are my priorities with my son and what he should and shouldn't be doing. Because the last thing that I want to do is make him grow up too early, treat him like an adult where he has to act like one and lose his genuine exuberance for the world around him and excitement. And I noticed that my husband and I, if we're not careful, that's what we end up doing. Now, if you don't know what your internal guidance system is, check it out at zeninamoment.com. There's a video on the homepage that I walk you through feeling it for yourself. I don't like to do it in every podcast um, because it takes up a little bit of time. It'll take you about three or four minutes. And for those of you who do know, that expansion feeling I call an opening, and that's in relationship to what you're thinking. And then there's a contraction feeling, and this happens between your throat and your upper solar plex area. The contraction feeling can feel like a lump in your throat or a tightening in your chest, chest or a lump in your stomach, and it's stress, anxiety, worry, fear, frustration, irritation. And a lot of the times when I'm saying no or asking him to not do something, I'm closed. It was like a big aha moment. The irritation, the way that I was thinking about my son, what he was doing and his behavior was closing. That means the way I was thinking about him jumping on the couch. There's good jumping on the couch and there's bad jumping on the couch. Uh, you know, there's one that breaks it and there's another one that's just him being a bouncy little boy who likes to move and wiggle and squirm around. And so I have to gauge where are the appropriate boundaries. Same thing with uh, my little one running around the house naked. He doesn't have to have his clothes on. I realized I was closed when I kept saying, keep your clothes on. And he was having a hard time keeping his clothes on. He loved to take his clothes off and race around the house. <laughs> And it made a lot of sense to me that I've learned to not do that, but he hasn't, and he was really enjoying himself. And when I checked in with my internal guidance system, is this matter? Is this something that I need to be, you know, stopping? I closed. And when I said it's healthy and good for him to run around without any clothes on in our home, in a safe environment, I opened. And what happened was, is I found that I, in learning how to stop and check in, I've been teaching him how to do that naturally because what I'll do is I'll start to say no to something and I'll say, hold on a second, let me think about it. And I'll look at him and I'll check in internally and I'll go, no, I think that's okay. You can keep doing that. Right now it's Christmas time almost and we've been decorating the house and one of his new toys, which I probably would have never let him play with, is a simple string of white lights. I've never seen a kid with so much joy. And every day he wakes up in the morning or when he gets back from daycare, he wants me to plug in the lights. And then he has, he just brings his toys over. He's made fake racetracks and he's stuffed the whole, all the lights in the back of his dump truck. And my first reaction to him playing with a string of electrical lights was to say no. And when I checked in, it wasn't the right choice. 
And I'm so happy I checked in. The reason is, is he has been so creative. His imagination has been going wild with this simple string of lights on the floor. He's done so many amazing little things with it. And he tells me all about it. And it's just been this really precious little moment. So I want to encourage you because I think a lot of times as parents, we get into our busy, busy day. We maybe don't want our, a mess. Um, we might not think that what the child is doing is important. And we can kind of collapse everything into a big no. Another time that just to share with you is I said it was dark outside. We live out in the country and my son kept wanting to go outside and we don't let him out at night. We don't have a lot of street lights or anything like that. And it just, we, when it's dark, he's in. And he kept wanting to go out. And I finally stopped. And I said, did you leave something outside? Are you wanting to go out to get something? And he said, yes. And he was so frustrated. Yes, mommy. And he had left one of his toys outside. And I kept just telling him, no, come inside without really checking in to find out why he wanted to go outside. And when, as soon as I did, it, it, I went out with him. We got his little toy and he came back in and it was fine. And so there's just a place and a way in which this divine center that you have, that we all have, can support you in, in keeping that exuberant child alive, giving him a level or her a level of respect. And then when the no does come, it's opening. Like when there are times when he shouldn't be doing something, your children shouldn't be doing something, you feel an opening. And what I've noticed is, is that when I have an opening to a no, it really isn't an appropriate thing for someone to be, the child to be doing right now, or that thing in particular, it's well received because what I have found is that opening begets opening. When you're open, the person that you're in relationship with is opening too, very often. And closing begets closing. When you're closed, the other person reacts with closing. And so when you have a no and you're doing it from a place of opening, your child feels that. And the no is respected and understood. There may be some pushback, of course. I used to do a, a summer camp and I also taught kids to ski. And I remember you know, it's so much easier when it's not your kid, but I would also check in with my IGS in being a good teacher. And what I found was, is that the kids really responded well to my structure and discipline because I came from a place of opening and they felt cared for and loved and really appreciated in the way that I created the structure for them. So I hope this helps you. I would love for you to be more open in your parenting and have your children experience you as a, in the flow, feeling light, open, and wise as you guide them on their way. We have tons of podcasts at iTunes and SoundCloud and also at my website, Zen in a Moment. Please feel free to go through, share, share, share. Let people know about this work. I really appreciate it. Sign up for our email list. We have programs and courses that we're launching. Uh, the Stress to Happiness Makeover is a fabulous program that will get you from being, hoping to be out of stress to eradicating stress in your life and opening yourself to your own purpose, love, and joy. And so check it out at zenandamoment.com. And of course, if you have any questions or a topic you'd like me to uh, talk on, please go ahead and leave it in the comments or contact me through our website page. I'd love to hear from you. And in the meantime, I'm sending you love and blessings.